Hey there guys, today we're going to be taking a look at 8 different esports titles running on this B-Link SCR5 mini PC. Now this mini PC has no graphics card, but it has a very powerful Ryzen APU in here. We're talking about the Ryzen 5 5600H. Now this 6 core 12 thread Zen 3 processor has a lot of power and we're rocking a Radeon 7 iGPU. Now this is of course based on the Vega architecture, though AMD has dropped the use of the name Vega just due to the fact that Vega is a old architecture and they're trying to hide the fact that they're still using this to this day but it's not the same Vega that we're used to from the 2000 and 3000 series this is of course on the 7 nanometer node from TSMC instead of the usual 14 and 12 nanometer from Global Foundries so there are IPC improvements here and the GPU clock speed in this can actually reach much higher than any Ryzen 2000 or 3000 APUs so we're talking about 7 GPU cores that can go up to a maximum of 1800 megahertz and it is paired with 16 gigabytes of ram so we'll see what it does in these games so starting off the list we have rainbow six siege running here at the lowest in game graphics settings and we are using fsr on top of it and what this is giving us is very very nice levels of performance we are looking at pretty much a almost consistently 100 fps or more at all times our one percent lows are just shy of 100 fps but for the most part we are just is going to be staying at around above 100 fps most of the time and it feels absolutely fantastic to play like this now i went with fsr at the performance preset you don't need to go that low in fact i would re probably recommend bumping it up to balance or the quality preset you're still going to get really nice fps and visually speaking it isn't going to look as bad now most of the fights in this game are very close quarters so really the fsr performance preset is perfectly fine but in long distance shootings that is where you actually start to notice the resolution drop which is why i recommend going with either balanced or the quality preset you're still going to get fantastic levels of performance but if you're looking to maximize this is pretty much the way to go but in general this was a fantastic experience but moving on to another esports title we have overwatch 2 right here running at the lowest in-game graphics settings with fsr on top of it now fsr in this game does not have any presets or anything it is just either on or it's off visually speaking it doesn't really impact the visual quality quality a lot so I would imagine it's somewhere around the quality preset and in general the level of performance that we're getting in this is completely rock solid we're not quite hitting a 100 fps average but being in the mid 80s to mid 90s really is nothing to complain about especially when our one percent lows are very close to 60 it just completely means that we're going to have a super smooth experience at all times and it's going to be very very enjoyable to play on here and I had an absolute blast playing on here it is one of those games where it is really nice to just be able to jump in here and actually have an enjoyable time playing it just runs super smooth and overwatch is just one of those games where you don't really need to take it too seriously personally i was never a fan of the pro scene of this game but it is an esports title and a lot of people seem to enjoy it so you're going to be able to play it perfectly fine here without needing to shell out the money for a system with a full graphics card going to run perfectly fine on integrated graphics now moving over to another esports title that i was never really that big of a fan of in terms of the competitive scene but i do enjoy playing a lot is rocket league now i have I haven't actually played this game very much since they removed it from steam but in general it is a very very fun game to play and it runs fantastically on here you're going to see that the one percent lows do dip below 60 but it's very very rare when those moments actually happen and for the most part we're just going to stay at it above 100 fps pretty much the entirety of the time and you're going to be able to have a absolutely great experience here we are running with the lowest in-game graphics settings but we did set the textures to the maximum pretty much with all of these games you can just max out the textures because since we have 16 gigabytes of ram and the ram itself is what acts as the video memory it means that in pretty much everything we can just max out the textures and it won't affect the gaming performance at all and this can really help to improve the visual quality without having to turn on any effects that might drop the overall performance so this is the lowest in-game graphics settings except for the textures being maxed and honestly it looks great you're going to be able to have a wonderful time playing like this so an absolute success here and really i had pretty much nothing to complain about now moving on to another very popular first person shooter we have counter-strike global offensive now unfortunately the game pretty much prevents you from using any kind of overlay so i'm not really able to use the msi afterburner overlay while playing online so what you're looking at here is a bot match but i did play the game itself on this system just with the steam fps counter to see what the level of performance is like 
And if you're just playing the game online, which I would suspect that is what you're going to be doing, you are actually going to get better performance than this here. Now, of course, I can't measure the 1% lows or anything like that. I can only pretty much judge the average just based off of seeing the FPS number. But in general, it was going to be pretty much above 100 FPS at all times, really. I can't tell you what the 1% lows are going to be like, but I can almost guarantee you they're going to be higher than what you're seeing here just because of the fact that the game also has to handle the AI for all of these different bots on here. So the fact that we're getting good performance here kind of just means that you're going to be able to get away with it performing even better when you're just playing online. And if you're wondering how I actually got the overlay to work here, well, you can enable third party software with a launch option in the game. But by doing so, you really can't play online without actually affecting your trusted score. And if you end up doing that, you are going to end up ruining your account and pretty much only playing with people that have very bad reputation in the game. And I'm not really willing to risk that just for some performance numbers. Just look at the numbers that we're getting here and just know that you this is a worst case scenario, which means that if you actually try to play the game on your specific system, you're going to get better results. Now, taking a look at another first person shooter that is very, very much inspired by Counter-Strike Global Offensive, we're taking a look at Valorant. Now, this is Valorant running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and the level of performance that we're getting here is remarkable. It's absolutely fantastic. It runs perfectly on here. We're looking at an FPS average that for pretty much every map was at the bare minimum, at least a hundred and fifty for the FPS average. And in this particular map that you're seeing here, we're getting more like hundred and eighty in a lot of situations. And our one percent lows are very comfortably above sixty, which means this is going to be feeling buttery smooth all the time, and you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time playing this. I really enjoy playing Valorant, and so getting this kind of performance out of this little system was great to see because it means that pretty much anyone can play this game perfectly fine on practically any system. You're going to have a great time here. And now for the exact opposite result, we're looking at Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 running on this specific system. And the level of performance that we're getting here is pretty brutal. We are running at the lowest in-game graphics settings, and that does set FSR on, and it sets it to the performance preset. And visually speaking, this is really, really rough. Trying to see anything at a distance becomes a nightmare just because the resolution is so low. You get some ridiculous levels of aliasing. It just is pretty brutal at distance. If you're in close quarters fights, it's perfectly fine, but the level of performance that you're getting here isn't exactly remarkable either. We're looking at 1% 1 1 lows that are only slightly above 30 FPS, and our FPS average is just slightly above 60, which means this isn't exactly the most ideal situation for a game that you're looking to play competitively. If you're willing to stomach this level of performance, you can get away with it. But if you're actually looking to play this at an esports level, you're not getting that here. So this is one of the only games really that ended up being a what I would consider a fail. It's not completely unplayable, as I said, but you're not exactly going to be getting a competitive level of experience. And I can almost promise you that this level of performance with the visual quality that you have to run it at is going to lead to some frustrating moments where you end up getting killed by enemies that you can barely see and your reaction time is not exactly going to be the greatest with 1% lows that are dropping into the 30s. But of course, one of the biggest esports in the world is League of Legends. Really, MOBAs in general have been dominating the esports scene for a very, very long time. And of course, League of Legends is very famous for being able to run on practically anything, and it is no different here. We are pretty much looking at a 100 FPS average for pretty much the entirety of the experience here, with our 1% lows just slightly under 60, which means that this is going to be buttery smooth and this is running with the medium graphics preset. We are not at the lowest graphics because we really don't need to go all the way down to the lowest graphics. If you see, our GPU right now is at 50% utilization. It's down clocking a lot of the time because it's really not being worked at all. This is completely on the CPU right now and it is able to deliver some pretty nice levels of performance. In general, this was a completely comfortable experience. This is, of course, a bot match because I still cannot just play Summoner's Rift. I don't really play League of Legends, but in general, the experience here was fantastic, as is to be expected for this title that has such a storied history as being able to run on literal toasters. As for its estranged cousin, Dota 2, as both are based off of the original Dota mod, this with the lowest in-game graphics settings, but with the render resolution set to 100%, since if you set the slider to the best performance, it actually sets a very, very aggressive 60% 
percent resolution which i think is very unnecessary here just switching just the resolution up to the 100 percent resolution of 1080p the level of performance that we get is perfectly acceptable our averages are pretty much going to be in the high 80s to low 90s most of the time and our one percent lows are really most of the time going to be in the mid 40s a perfectly acceptable experience and it felt absolutely great to play it's definitely not as performant as league of legends but both are providing an experience that is going to be absolutely wonderful to play and i really think that you're going to have very very little to complain about here so taking a look at all eight of these esports titles you can see that this mini pc is actually able to do a really fantastic job on most of them the only one that actually gave us any trouble at all was call of duty warzone 2.0 everything else was giving us a level of performance that is going to be more than acceptable and you're going to have a fantastic time and it's to the point where you might actually consider spending your money on a high refresh rate display because you pair this with a 144 hertz monitor at 1080p and you're looking at some really really incredible levels of performance and if you want to take these games more seriously you want to get really competitive with them you don't need to shell out for a beast of a computer really pairing this mini pc with a nice monitor is going to give you a better experience so i have to say i really love this little mini pc you get crazy levels of performance out of it you're able to handle some of the most popular games in the world really really well on this system i definitely recommend giving it a go you can pick it up for really cheap a lot of the times you can usually find it at around the 325 to around 350 dollar range and at that price there is no other mini pc that can compete with this level of performance and really you're very rarely going to find any pc out there that gives you this level of performance at that price point a lot of the times you're gonna have to go through the used market and that might not exactly exist in your region but these are globally available and they perform extremely extremely well if you're interested in picking up one of these you can check out the link down below that will of course help support the channel if you would like to support the channel directly you can always become a member for as little as a dollar a month but anyways i want to thank you for watching i will catch you in the next one